Thank you very much. That was indeed very interesting and a lot of questions, of course, coming up uh, based on, on your presentation. I would argue I have a few and then we have actually quite some time for the audience to come in. So I'll let you think a little bit of the sort of tricky questions um, and you can ask them in Swedish or English, of course. We will keep most of the discussion up here in English if that is okay. Can I ask you first a question, Elizabeth? Do you agree? Yes, I do. I, thi I think you... Take the mic. Yeah. So, sorry. No, I, I think you very much have pinpointed the problems and uh, um, that is probably the preferable way for CAP to develop is to move into a more mm. environmentally friendly direction. Um, but, but you said in general that, that farmers, one of the reasons we are, you know, farmers are leaving farming, uh, I guess in many parts of the world, uh, even in, in Europe of course, is because of lack of uh, good income. 80% of the cap is obviously income support. Is the whole idea here that uh, that should be shifted from actually subsidies <coughs> supporting income to higher food prices instead. Uh, to, to link on to what I said earlier is also to, I mean, if you should uh, uh, have a more market-oriented uh, situation in mm. Europe, and, and then you cannot ask for the same, uh, uh, what, what can we say, you cannot demand from us farmers to, to provide with, with the, the extra cost that it mm. means to, to be more environmentally friendly. But I think you have to link that to, you should ask for, like consumers in Europe or in Sweden should ask for, for products from developing countries to have the same standard, to be produced under the same circumstances. And that is a help for developing countries. It's not that you are, are killing them from the market. It's instead a, tr a help to make farmers in developing countries to, to raise their level. I mean, I can give example of that colleagues in, in, in Africa, or I have a good, good example from Palestine, uh, that uh, pesticides that have been forbidden uh, in Europe for 20, 30 years are still around in the market. And once they try to export these products to Europe, they are banned and stopped. Uh, and they think it is because it, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a trade barrier, but it's not, it's because it's not healthy. But these farmers and these families are still exposed to these pesticides. Mm. So by asking for, for, for a better standard and a better circumstances for developing countries, I think that is, in long term, uh, it would be, uh, it's necessary. Mm. Mat Matthias, do you think, uh, or, and WWF, things that food prices in Europe must increase dramatically to achieve this. You, because what you're saying is that you would like to remove this, at least part of this 80% now going to income support. Do you mm. think that is, that is the wrong priority for the cap? Well, so the question is whether we support farmers to produce or to be able to produce in a way so that they can sell the products for a low price to mm. the retailer or whether we strengthen the, 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 the population or the, those parts of the population who cannot afford higher prices to, to buy those higher prices. So I, I sometimes have the question, is it better to, to have a better welfare, uh, welfare, um, uh, social system to strengthen the population to, to buy better and high price products instead of well, spreading, spreading money all over Europe to the farmers to somehow s to survive and to be able to sell it to lower prices. And so I can't say WWF believes. Um, I think uh, that there are sympathies in our organization saying, yes, the prices are very often too low. Mm. Elizabeth? Just to say a few words about uh, the, the price of food. I mean, I think people in Sweden spend less than 12 or 13 percent on food these days. Uh, so it's a very low part of, of the, the net income. And I think coming back to the CAP, I think, I mean, there are some public goods I think taxpayers are prepared to pay for. I, will, uh, I, I think we can quote Mar Marianne fisher Bowl, and she said um, that the, the taxpayers in Europe, Europe are prepared to pay for a CAP, but mm. they want to have uh, public goods that are worth paying mm. for. And I'm, I'm back to that with the rural development, for example. And I think that is something that is necessary for if we are going to have a sustainable development, uh, development mm. in, in the world. So uh, I think CAP contains different elements that mm. have 
different um, effects. Mm. So it's not only about the, the market price. But uh, Elizabeth, if I uh, try to provoke you a little bit, <laughs> maybe, I mean, you are a good example of a farmer. Huh? You are very conscious. Uh, you, you really believe in, in, uh, in um, what you are trying to achieve. You believe in environmental aspects mm -hmm. and so on. And you, of course, argue that this, the consumers should pay. But in general, the European farmers, are they very flexible? Are they forändringsbenägna, as mm. we would say in <laughs> Swedish? Uh, sometimes the impression is that, you know, as when you try to change something in the EU, the French farmers, they run to Champs-Élysées and pour out all this cabbage and, and everything. Uh, this stereotype, do you think that there is among farmers a willingness to see a dramatic shift in, in the cap? And I would ask you the same question as well, but I start with you. I, I think it's it's difficult to generalize and say that, that, that we are flexible or not, but I, I, it's definitely awareness, and I think that you can back down to the own farmyard, and you like we can we have noticed the weather patterns are changing, we, we we can see what's happening in the world. I mean, we are in the middle of a new financial crisis, and, and as farmers, we are also affected by that. So we we are uh, in 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 the the same surroundings mm. like everybody else. So of course we are understand that we have to change uh, if the world is changing but it has also been a, possi uh, a possibility for, for us to ad adapt and, and to de develop the business but mm. I think it's it's important to say that CEP is not it's not essentially for us as farmers it, I mean it is for, for the for the European uh, citizens and it's it's uh, I mean it's it's not that you should think that you should pay us so we can continue being farmers. Mm. I, th I think that is a wrong approach, really. Okay, Matthias, do you agree? I mean, you, you, you come from another perspective. When you are out talking to, for instance, farmers, stake yeah. stakeholders, uh, is that your impression that you can see this change taking place? Well, it depends on the stakeholders. It, it depends on the, on, the, on the farmers you're talking to, those who, who are really thinking about how can I market my product in a different way instead of... Um, I produce my products and I just close my eyes when the, 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 the person is coming to whom I'm selling the mm. products. I'm, I'm, I'm rude on this. And so, and there are differences. But just a question, I mean, we are in a time where all our national budgets or, or treasuries mm. saying, okay, we don't have any money. We don't have any money. We we are going to. We are not able to increase our school system. Every other system, we we're gonna have problems to um, to maintain a good uh, medical health care because we do have depth all over. We don't have the budget, and then we are going to Brussels discussing about 60 billion euros a year spending for for the income of families. I don't say that this is. Uh, I have enough contacts and, 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 and friends amongst farmers, and I, I know that it's hard if you have uh, economic problems, mm. yes. But the question is, if this is, the, the society has to give, the, or the taxpayer gives money. And then my question is, why shouldn't receive a small person somewhere else or a, a, a hair cutter or a butcher somewhere in, in a remote area where it's important to have a butcher and the, 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 the person is um, financing the family mm. with, with, the, uh, with his business, why shouldn't we give this person as well mm. a kind of money? And so the question is really, there should be a, a transfer, there should be, as you said, um, a, a payment for public goods or for, for goods a farmer is producing but it has to be coupled to, to, mm. to, to standards. Mm. And I don't see the current standard as enough for, for payments. We really have to discuss about the targets. And I mean, even, even the European Commission says, well, we have challenges ahead of us, challenges in, in, in climate, in soil, in water. Yeah, go for it. Mm. Thank you. Well, you know, we are helping other people as well in Europe. Look at all the banks. They also, you know, <laughs> the, poor, the poor banks, we are helping them as well. So it's not only farmers, you know, it's also the banks. <laughs> also uh, the banks. Yeah, you know. That's a, that's a nice group to be together exactly. with. <laughs> now, I just wanted to say that, I mean, uh, the main reason for the CEP was actually to provide Europe with food. And, mm. and that has been forgotten for very many mm. years. Mm. But I think that 
that mustn't be forgotten, that it's actually food security. We don't think about that in, in Sweden every day, or perhaps not any day. Uh, but I think that is something to remember, because mm. it's not that we are, farmers are actually quitting business. And in Sweden, we have lost quite a bit of production. So it's a matter of you either pay in the shop or you have to pay somewhere else for the cost of the production. Mm. And uh, I think this, uh, I think it's important to, to say about the CAP, we need uh, uh, agricultural policy. Uh, all people need that. And, and how it should be formed and what focus it should have or which elements it should be uh, rewarding uh, uh, mm. for us, uh, that is up to you, uh, who are taxpayers. So, so and, and I think f as farmers, we are very um, flexible and willing to follow what is asked from us. Mm. Thank you. Just my last question to you before I let uh, the audience come in also. I mean, you, you are pushing quite a lot. Europe should take the lead. We should invest more in, in, in environmentally friendly agriculture. We have to deal with the climate issue and so on. Isn't there just a risk that we are even more pushing out the production to other parts of the world, becoming even more bigger importers and so on with all this? Um, because we, as you say, we need global Im agreements then, but they are far away. Uh, so, okay, but I mean, um, looking on the on, on on the agriculture in the moment in Europe, not I mean, it's we don't have the uh, the agriculture. We have millions of different mm. farmers uh, around Europe, but. What we can see in the moment is that although we have a common agriculture policy in place, although we have the cross-compliance, we are losing every day hundreds of farmers. We are losing soils. We are emitting climate gases. We are losing biodiversity. And we are losing fertility of soils. So my question, and, and we are not very nice to animals in the way we are treating them. We are causing eutrophication, we are uh, provoking dead zones in, in the Baltic seas with our agriculture. So the question is, when we n don't do anything in the moment, mm. we are going to lose the basis for the production and for either for, for the income of farmers the, so the economic basis, we are losing them within the next 20 years, soil, water, mm. fertility. Uh, and we are losing the basis for the production of food for our continent. Mm. So we have no choice, really. Actually, we don't have a choice to change something. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was a question, <laughs> really. But I, I mean, CAP, if just, uh, I mean, you to reward good behavior instead of bad behavior. I think mm. that is a good approach to have. <laughs> so. mm. Thank you. Uh, questions from the audience? Uh, I hope now. You, uh, yes, in the back. Yes, please. You can ask in Swedish or English. It's OK. Just yeah, is it on? Yep. I actually like your expression, Matthias, landless livestock production, because I think that's one of the big problems. Mm -hmm. And I think your, your map showed it very, very well. Um, so, and, and to, to catch on to Elisabeth's suggestion here, why not uh, approve or, or give money to good behavior, moving some of these animals out on the lands that we have in Europe? Maybe that would be an, a, a name for CIP. We do have vast areas of grasslands in Europe that are currently not grazed, and we have farmers who would love to live there and get their uh, living from from keeping animals there, but there are not the support system in the CAP today. Any comment on that, or this was more of a comment, but well, yeah. Yeah, well, to totally agree. <laughs> you totally agree. Good. So, any other questions? Or yes, we have a gentleman over here. In, if you yeah, can take the microphone. Thank you, Kalle uh, Bonanol, Umeå Universitet. Uh, I have a uh, question for a comment from you on the consumer side. What I see is a fundamental problem here is also that we have uh, some kind of ideology saying that the con consumer is king. Uh, it's a no-no to say anything that you, you consumer is doing something wrong. We had a, lately we have a proof on that that the Swedish Food Authority was not allowed to to give advice on uh, environmental impact on on food consumption. And on the other side, we have actual pr consumer preferences driving climate change, mm. not hindering them. We have to accept that. That's a fact. 
do you have any idea how to come around that, that clash between we cannot say that the consumer are wrong, but actually they are wrong? <laughs> Thank you. We are, we are coming back to the consumer issue later today, but it's of course interesting to hear your perspectives. I mean, do you try in a way to change consumers by offering new types of products? How much are you the driver in this case and how much are the consumer asking for this? Uh, well, I live in Uppsala, which is uh, um, a very densely populated uh, city uh, of students, really. So it's mm. a great awareness amongst our consumers. And I think that it's very much consumer driven. But that example you brought up with the Swedish authorities or food authorities, I think there is this kind of a, a scare uh, that, that authorities are scared. I mean, they're, they're so scared that we should be trade distorting and uh, instead of trying to see what kind of solution that we actually can by, by uh, being more creative, I mean, not being so afraid of that. I mean, what's wrong with trying to, to uh, I mean, trying to raise the awareness amongst the population. In, I mean, and not say, oh, well, now we are trade distorting here, so we cannot do it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's kind of a cowardness, really, I think. Matthias, before you go, anyone from the Swedish Food Authority here? <laughs> who <laughs> likes... Who likes to comment on this uh, particular? Oh, so, so yeah. you, okay, good. So uh, let's, Matthias, if you want to okay. just make a comment, and I will give you the chance just to comment first. Um, I think I think it, uh, the point is very good because it we do we are in the European Union. I I'm a f I'm a fan of the European Union. Okay, just to say, well, okay. Although we pay the bill in the moment, but um, and you too, I know. Yes, thank and you. And others too, uh, but <laughs> the the point is that that. Because of this, um, our laws and regulations in the European Union not to distort uh, competition, we do have the, this problem with the public procurement standards, in my point of view. Mm -hmm. So that, that we are not able to say, okay, the public procurement, which is important, in my point of view, to raise awareness amongst the con consumers, even the kids, I see it with my three kids. I mean, mm. they, they in, in kindergarten, they got wonderful food, but in school, they are feed, fed with, with rubbish. Mm. And so if we have, and, and they get used to the rubbish. And um, so we really have to, to, to change this public procurement standards and to, to get more sustainability criteria in it. So this is, in my point of view, quite important. Mm. Thank you. Yes, please, uh, comment. Just speak directly in the microphone, it's on. Yes, yes uh, my name is Marianne Johnson from the National Board of Trade. Ah. Uh, I, uh, colleagues of mine have been more involved than, than me in this, and we have information on our website about this. Uh, it's a very complicated issue. I also know that uh, the, the agriculture, or uh, like it, <laughs> has al also been involved in these questions. And uh, trade and environment should be mutually uh, supportive. Mm. And uh, it's a question of what measures you have, uh, you uh, uh, recommend. And it's also, uh, of course, very special if a Swedish authority gives advice. Mm. Uh, that's very different from uh, if. Uh, there are uh, voluntary organizations giving recommendations and so on. So, so this is a very complicated issue and uh, I, I can't go into all this now. But you argue that... Yeah, you that... You can find solutions where you both can uh, uh, support the environment mm. and not being trade distorted. Okay, so you, but you argue that the authorities should be more careful about the recommendations. We should have a, a discussions among uh, authorities and find mm -hmm. the right solutions and right ways to support both the environment and the trade. Okay. Because it's very important for the global development, uh, for uh, developing countries and so on also, to have possibilities to sell their goods to us mm. and not recommend in all cases that you should uh, eat uh, local produced uh, food and so on. It's too, too, it's too much simplified okay. to say like that. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's a big issue, of course, and I know this could open up a completely new sort of dimension of uh, should we eat more locally produced or should we foster global trade? Of course, that is also important and so on. The only thing I can recommend is a fantastic report, World Trade Organization's annual report in 2010. Focus actually on natural resources. That's very interesting. Trade in natural resources. And the way they are discussing the food issue there, <laughs> like, you know, that it's sort of not a natural resource because of all this. But then they start to talk about it. And even water embedded in food is becoming an important part of trade. I can recommend that you read it. It's, it's very interesting. And I guess it's trying to take an authority approach. But really, thank you for uh, what I would argue is an excellent discussion and uh, diff some diverging views, but of course also a lot of commonalities. And we have 14 months now to influence the CAP process. So, yes. Thank you very much.